Now we have our function that's going to take in a value and when the document's ready, execute this Ajax. And when the Ajax is done, it's going to execute this function. So this data that we're going to send through is, we're going to call it, whatever we want to call it, we're going to call it to hash in quotes. And we need that, that, that variable that we're sending to be equal to this JavaScript. And what we're doing is, uh, we're forming a text string here. So for example, when you go to a URL, let's go to google.com here. You're going to go to index.php. Sometimes you'll see in the URL question mark var equals data and var equals data2, etc. So basically it's forming, the Ajax is forming this in a text string. Okay? That's what's happening here. So we want to hash equal to this value. And when this is extracted and evaluated, this won't look like this anymore. It'll just be to hash equals whatever we typed in. Okay? Now we need to end that with a comma, not a semicolon, because this is still one thing. Now, upon success, actually, when the file is done, we want to set the hash of that. So what's coming back from the PHP file will be the hash. So we want to get that hash uh, input box with hash like that, and we want to set its value equal to that result, which will be the hash. Now, there's one problem with this. This jQuery returns a jQuery object. In that jQuery object, it's going to, it's going to search for a certain amount of elements. I know that this will only match one element, but I can't just do dot value. jQuery actually isn't smart enough to know that if there's only one object, then I want that element. So it doesn't know to do that. So I need to do prop I need to do object dot value just like I did down here. This was the input object. So I need to actually refer to the zeroth element in the jQuery array, which is the element. So now I have jQuery element zero, which is the input box element dot value equals the result, which is the hash of what I typed. Now we need to actually see that in action. So test it out. Nothing's going to happen here. Okay, so nothing changed. First thing we need to do is write out the PHP file. We need to create this hash2.php. Keep in mind we're sending it to hash. So we'll create a new document, open up our PHP, close our PHP. We're going to request from the URL, request to hash, which is what we named it, and we're going to store that in a variable called uh, value. And then we're going to echo out, so print out, which is basically sending back to the success function, the MD5 hash of that variable. Now, uh, what a hash is, is basically a one-way ticket to a new, to like, a, a brand new set of characters with numbers and letters. And the reason it's one way is there's a specific algorithm created, and go look it up if you want to, that if I type in the word crab and get a certain hash, I won't be able to get from that hash back to the word crab. So this is great for passwords and things. So this is all I need for the PHP. So basically we are <clears throat> printing out the hash of this variable, which is equal to the request of this variable that was sent in. So in, out. So we'll save that back to uh, hash2.php and you can see the syntax highlighting that this is correct and go back here and as long as everything is written correctly uh, that should work. So refresh the page and as I start typing you can see that the hash is changing. So for example the word Google that is the MD5 hash of the word Google. So very cool. Now, the one thing is, though, and, and the thing about hash is, you can't get from this hash to this word. That's the point of an MD5 hash. So there's one last thing we need to do. If I delete all the letters here, there's still a hash in place. Well, what is this hash? What is this D41D8CD? It shouldn't be there. So what we need to do is, if I key up and it's blank, we need to blank out this text box. So right here, before we fill it in with the result, we need to check. We need to say if 
the value, which uh, the value here is what was typed. So if what was typed is blank equals quote quote, which is equals nothing, we need to do this function. Else, we need to do this function. So if it's blank, we want to... Well, if it's not blank, we want to do this. If it is blank, we need to get that hash, just like we did earlier. And we need to get the zeroth element so we can work with it. And we need to set the value equal to blank. Now, if it passes this, which means it is blank, it will create a blank for the uh, hash box. If it's not blank, it'll hash it. So now we test that out, and when we type, there you go. And as I delete, when I'm done deleting, oh, it doesn't go away. So what I need to do is check if value, okay, there we go, I actually have it reversed. So we do if value, which means if there is a value, then we grab the result. There we go. That's what happened. Okay. The, that actually wasn't the problem. The problem is I'm missing the, the pound sign here. So I'm, I'm actually referring to it incorrectly. <clears throat> so uh, if this equals to blank, there we go. Now we refresh it, and I'm done typing, and there it goes. Now there's one other way to write this that I prefer if you want to go into it. Um, and that's going to be, uh, let's reverse these, just to show you a quick JavaScript trick here. Okay. So now all we did was reverse them, and then we use not equal to. So if this value is not equal to blank, as in there is something there, then it will do it. All we did was reverse it. Now reversing it gives us the ability to delete all this information. Now, basically what we're doing is, when you test a variable like this, if this is true, do this. If it's false, do this. Okay? Now, in this case, when it's blank, that will be the equivalent of false. Therefore, I can do it this shorthand way. So, as you can see, when I type and I delete, it's still going to go away. So, when, I, when I'm blank, value is blank, which uh, evaluates to false, then it goes to this else statement. So there you go, quick and easy way. Um, next thing we're going to do after this is turn this into a password checker. So that'll be really neat. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching.